us engage a method for specific diagnosis histopathologically of neoplastic skin diseases. Before a histopathologist can come to a diagnosis of a neoplasm with specificity, there first must be a method for differentiation of benign from malignant neoplasms by silhouette. And even children are able to recognize objects by silhouette. For example, they can tell the difference between a boy and a girl. Girls have long hair. And they can recognize all of these structures. And if children can do it, so too can a histopathologist. On the left is a benign neoplasm. On the right, a malignant neoplasm. And that can be determined by silhouette alone. Where does the word silhouette come from? Well, it is a picture drawn or printed in solid black, and it derives from a Frenchman by the name of Etienne de Silhouette, who was said to have decorated the walls of his chateau with these outlined portraits in black. Now, what are the cytopathologic attributes reputed to be those of a malignant neoplasm? Well, the cliche is nuclei that are large, hyperchromatic, and pleomorphic. Well, in reality, um, the nuclei are really crowded. That's the most important sign. They're heterochromatic. They stain differently, one from another, and they're pleomorphic. In the center of this neoplasm, you see undifferentiated neoplastic cells, and they have crowded nuclei. The nuclei are heterochromatic, they're pleomorphic, and some are in mitosis. And you know there's sebaceous differentiation because on either side of them there are sebacytes. And we go to lower magnification and you see a sebaceous carcinoma. Asymmetrical both in terms of lobules of sebacytes and distribution of lymphocytes and associated with lobules that are, have bizarre geometric outlines. So this is not a sebaceous adenoma, but it's a sebaceous carcinoma. Superficial. All neoplasms of the skin for practical purposes begin superficially. But the silhouette of a neoplasm is a more accurate morphologic representation of the biologic behavior of it than is any cytopathologic consideration. And these are the reasons. Cytologic atypia is not necessarily synonymous with biologic malignancy. Look at how atypical these histiocytes are, many of them foaming. And as we go to lower magnification, you'll see that in addition to lipophages, there are siderophages. And this is a dermatofibroma. It is a dermatofibroma with so-called monster cells. That's how atypical the nuclei are. But this process isn't even aplastic. It's a fibrosing inflammatory process. And there's a dermatofibroma. Cytologic tipia is not necessarily synonymous with biologic malignancy. Look how small and thin these nuclei are. As we go to lower magnification, it becomes obvious that this is dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans. It's a sarcoma. It's malignant, but not associated with any cytopathologic atypia. Now, there are certain general principles that must be acknowledged if one can begin to think rationally about diagnosis of neoplasms, not only in the skin, but any organ. <clears throat> How is a neoplastic process distinguished from an inflammatory process histopathologically? Well, in an inflammatory process, all the cells are inflammatory ones. Whereas in a neoplastic process, there always are some other kinds of cells in addition to inflammatory cells. There may not be any inflammatory cells in a neoplastic process, but they may be there always in association with other kinds of cells. How are neoplasms named? Well, according to the cells that compose them, like lymphocytes, lymphoma, mast cells, mesocytoma, etc., and tissues toward which they differentiate, not from which they originate, because most of the time one has no idea from whence a neoplasm originates. Now, here's an algorithmic method using scanning magnification based on pattern analysis for specific diagnosis of both inflammatory and neoplastic diseases. This method also applies to other fundamental pathologic processes like hyperplasias, malformations, hamartomas, deposits, and cysts. Is the pathologic process inflammatory or neoplastic? And if inflammatory, we have nine patterns that take you to a specific diagnosis. 
If neoplastic, is it benign or malignant? If benign, epithelial or non-epithelial, what kind of cells are they? And what's the type of differentiation? And from that to a specific diagnosis. And if malignant, once again, epithelial or non-epithelial cells, type of differentiation or a lack of differentiation to specific diagnosis. So that's our algorithm. What does differentiation mean? It's the relative capability of a neoplasm to resemble a normal structure. And when successful, neoplasms are designated well differentiated, and if unsuccessful, they're termed undifferentiated. A benign neoplasm is simply one without capability, that is potential, to kill by local destruction or metastasis, whereas a malignant neoplasm has the capability. It doesn't mean it's going to exercise it, but it has the potential to kill by local destruction or metastasis.